For nearly 20 years, the Toyota Prius nameplate has been synonymous with eco-minded drivers. This is a car that was a trendsetter back in the early 2000 era, simply because it was really ahead of its time for its time. It was driven by celebrities such as George Clooney, Cameron Diaz, and Natalie Portman, just to name a few. Now, over the years, the Prius nameplate grew so strong that Toyota moved about over 100,000 of these every year, with the company peaking around 150,000 of these cars in the mid to late 2000 eras. Now, what has happened to the Toyota Prius over the years? Because this current generation, the fourth generation, came out back in 2016. And ever since it came out, sales of the Prius have tanked to the point where Toyota barely moved about 50,000 of these in 2018. So for 2019, in order to stop the bleeding, Toyota is introducing a significantly refreshed Prius with a new front and rear fascia, a slightly tweaked interior, and the availability of all-wheel drive for the first time in North America. So if you guys are actually looking for an efficient hybrid commuter car, should you put the Prius back on your shopping list? That's what we're here to find out. So when Toyota introduced the fourth generation Prius about four years ago, it was widely known as being a car that was kind of hit with the ugly stick. Myself included, I really didn't like the design of this car, especially when you look at the third generation and the second generation Prius. That was a really sleek, futuristic, trend-setting kind of car that was packed full of technology and it had a slippery design. This new generation took a lot of influence from the Toyota Mirai fuel cell car, which it itself was also not very attractive. So to try to fix the criticism with the design. Toyota has made some changes to the front fascia for 2019. Looking at the front end, I'm squinting at it and I'm still trying, I'm still struggling to find an attractive angle of this car. There are a couple things that I do like. It's got full LED headlights, standard equipment, even on the basic model. You can see my tester here also has an LED turn signal, LED low and high beam, and then down here are the lower fascia, as opposed to that separate part of the headlight, which kind of came down to the lower front fascia. They've gotten rid of that and they've replaced it with this LED running light that's going along the uh, lower end of the front fascia with this chrome or this silver trim that's surrounding the LED running light. I think this should have been body colored or black because I think it stands out too much in a bad way. I do like the LED fog lights that you get here, but just overall the front end of this car just looks too narrow. It looks too frumpy and too strange. I'm not particularly in love with the design of the front fascia, but you guys will have to let me know in the comments below if you think that the refreshed model was a, was a win or if it was still uh, somewhat of a miss for Toyota. So unfortunately, things don't really get much better when you look at the side profile of the Prius. Now keep in mind, Toyota went with this overall silhouette because they were trying to improve the aerodynamics. They say this car has a 0.24 coefficient of drag, which is just 0.01 better than the previous generation. And supposedly it matches that of a Tesla Model S. Now, as you can see, there's a hybrid badge on the side. All Prius models will come at that. And then this all wheel drive version is available in LE and XLE grade. Unfortunately, if you guys are looking for the 17 inch wheels you find on the limited trim, that's not available on the all wheel drive model. Instead, you'll just get these 15 inch uh, alloy wheels with this plastic wheel cover over it that is supposed to help with aerodynamics. They're riding on 195 series tires. Again, these tires and wheels are great for the ride quality and they're inexpensive to replace, just not so good with the overall looks. Now this car was the first Toyota model to introduce their TNGA platform. It's an all new platform and Toyota was able to redesign the rear suspension for this Prius to have a multi-link independent setup as opposed to the twist beam semi-independent of the previous generation. It significantly improved the ride and handling of this car which Toyota made it a little bit sportier to drive, which is not something that Prius models are known for. Now above here, you can see no sunroof. A uh, sunroof is available on the non all wheel drive models, but not on the all wheel drive models, surprisingly. And then Toyota kind of followed the floating roof design trend here uh, with this rear area here. Remember this car is supposedly a hatchback, even though it tries to look a little bit like a sedan. I'm not sure I particularly love all the creases here. Um, and then some of the body work. Uh, this car's design or the car's wheelbase is 106.3 inches long. It's the same size as the previous generation, but at 180.3 inches long, this is about four inches longer than the third generation Prius. At the rear of the 2019 Prius, you can see Toyota made similar changes to the front fascia back here on the taillights. They've been kind of simplified. They're trying to make it look a little bit more conventional. I don't love the fact that there are not a full LED design like that you get with the front headlights. You can see the turn signal is just an incandescent. You have LED accented rear taillights here. Uh, there's only a single all-wheel drive e-badge on that side, but there is a lot of badging here. I think it's a little bit too cluttered. I think Toyota could have cleaned that up. Uh, as with other Prius models, you have that kind of split look 
to the rear tailgate and you have this integrated spoiler. This is all for the aerodynamics. I really don't like this black plastic cladding here at the lower part of the rear bumper. I think Toyota should have just painted this. They're trying to make it look a little bit more crossover even. Remember, this car doesn't actually have any more ground clearance. This car only has around 5.3 inches, so you're not going to be taking this thing off-road just because it's all-wheel drive. Now, this car being a hatchback, you do get significantly more cargo space than what you would find in something like the new Toyota Corolla hybrid sedan. Uh, and when you lift up the lift gate here, you can see Toyota says you get around 24.7 cubic feet of space. That's actually about the same as what you get in the non-all-wheel drive model. So it's good to know that the all-wheel drive system doesn't actually take up any space in the cargo area. The surprising change about the all-wheel drive model, instead of the lithium-ion batteries you get in the front drive models, Toyota actually puts a nickel-metal hydride battery that you'll find underneath the rear seat of this particular one. If you fold down those seats, Toyota actually didn't have any specific numbers, uh, but it looks like it's around over 50 cubic feet. And then underneath here, there's no spare tire. Instead, Toyota just gives you a fix-a-flat kit. All right, so by now you guys probably assumed I don't like the styling even on the refreshed Prius, but let's hop into the interior and see some of the changes that Toyota has made for 2019. Now, as you can see here, all Prius models come standard with the company's smart key access system with push button start. Here is the current Toyota key fob. You can see here the hybrid badge is blued out because all the hybrids get that. No remote start on the actual key fob. So as you approach the door handle of the Prius, you can see Toyota does a little, little sensor pad right here on the door handle. Just touch that pad over there, it'll lock the doors when you have the key on you to unlock it. Just touch the back of the door handle and the door will unlock for you. Now, as you can see, my tester has this really nice combination here with the red and the beige interior. I think it actually does look great. I like the beige on the dashboard, on the door panels. You just have like kind of a four-way or six-way manual adjustment for the seats. You can't get power seats on this car, which is kind of a shame, but getting into this car, you can see the step-in height is pretty sedan typical. Uh, again, Toyota didn't raise the ground clearance, even though this is the all-wheel drive version. And then when you shut the door, it sounds a little tinny. It's kind of reminds me of the tinny sound that you get in the Camry and the Corolla. So a little disappointed by the tinny hollow sound of the door. Now to start the vehicle up, just put your foot on the brake, push this button here to fire up the engine or turn on the electronics. Now you can see this display here is puny. Uh, it's only six and a half inches. This is the largest screen you can get in the all wheel drive Prius. If you guys want that big 11.6 inch display, you have to go for the two wheel drive Prius and go for the limited trim or the Prius Prime also has that. Unfortunately, if you're looking for Apple CarPlay, it's still not available. Annoyingly, Toyota has not put it on the Prius for 19, but I hear it's coming for 2020. Now looking at the rest of this interior, the materials, you can see this dashboard here is a soft touch injection molded plastic. It's got a nice uh, pattern grading material. It's a very cheap uh, hard plastic over here. And then up here on this part, it's completely hard plastic over this eyebrow display. This display here really hasn't changed over the years. I mean, you have two LCDs over here uh, that show your speedometer. You can also show all different kinds of trip information, your climate information, driver assistance stuff. Remember the Toyota Safety Sense P is standard, but it's not the 2.0 that you're gonna get on the newer versions. Um, this display here is a little bit small and it's a little bit too far away, which is good for kind of looking at it at a glance, but I think Toyota should just make this one complete big LCD display and also improve the graphics. Uh, this instrument panel here, or the dashboard looks really interesting. Uh, the piano black plastic trim that you see is basically new for 19. Before, Toyota used to offer a piano white accented trim. Instead, they've replaced it with the black accented trim. This door panel over here is soft touch on this upper portion. Uh, it's hard touch plastic over here, and then it's slightly padded over here. There's a nice grab handle over there. The driver window is one touch express up and down. Same with the passenger window and for the rear window. So it's good that Toyota is including all one touch for all four windows, which is great. There's a couple of buttons here for the automatic parallel parking, stability control off, your automatic high beam switch. And then also there's a head up display that my tester has that's part of an advanced technology package, which does look good. Um, I'm surprised to actually find a head up display in this vehicle. Now putting the car into reverse, you can see just a pretty standard backup camera, not even trajectory. It's got parking sensors in the back, but surprised to see no trajectory in this car, something that's technologically advanced. And really this screen is horrible. It doesn't even have embedded navigation system. It does have their Entune system so you can, you know, plug in your phone and get like Scout GPS, which you have to download that. But come on, Toyota, really? Um, this here looks like it's the same screen that I found in the second generation Prius from 15 years ago, back in 2004. I mean, this shows some pretty useful information, but come on, this is a very old looking display and Toyota could just do 
much better. They've got better systems in their newer products. Now you can see here, um, going into your audio setup, this car doesn't even have satellite radio. It just has AM, FM, and no HD radio. Like, come on. This is the XLE version, the top of the line all-wheel drive version. This head unit is just a huge disappointment. So really, if you guys want a better head unit, buy the Corolla Hybrid Sedan because this is just pathetic, or at least go for the regular Prius without all-wheel drive because you can get that big 11-inch display, which annoyingly still doesn't have Apple CarPlay. Now, of course, you can also look at the screen over here, which will show you some information. Um, there's, again, your all-wheel drive system, which I'll show you guys in the test drive where the torque is going. Uh, it shows, again, another energy monitor up there, which does look a little bit better than what I found over here. So it's kind of a good thing that you can also mimic the display over there. Your hybrid vehicle system indicator, your fuel economy information, uh, and then, of course, your driving modes and whatnot. Speaking of the drive modes, if you push this button over here, it cycles between eco, between normal, and then the power mode, which I like how Toyota calls it power instead of sport. If the battery has enough charge, you can also push EV mode, but right now it doesn't have enough charge. This here, this joystick shifter, is the same shifter that Toyota's been using for years. You push this button here to go into park. I like how my tester has a wireless phone charger, which is always really nice. It fits my iPhone 10 there perfectly. You have just two level heated seats. Don't expect to find cooled seats. And then over here, more piano black plastic trim. Uh, you have cup holders and you have a USB port over there. But again, no Apple CarPlay and then a power outlet over there. This is nice and padded over here, which is good. This opens up uh, on the driver's side, which reveals a pretty deep amount of storage, which is good. No additional power outlets in there, which is surprising. Above me, there's no sunroof available on the hybrid or on the all-wheel drive versions you have to step down to the other trims you can see it's just incandescent lighting over here which is really surprising why didn't they put led lighting that would have been nice to see um and then the seats you can see they're covered in a soft tex leatherette material so it's not real leather they are actually very comfortable and supportive and soft i like the seats i think they look a little bit boring i think toyota could have done with you know some different colors different accents stitching and whatnot the glove compartment you can see here is very small it is damped but not lined with felt so overall the interior of the prius definitely feels as dated as it looks on the outside uh just very surprised to see this very old looking head unit but in terms of space and visibility this is still great you do have the toyota safety sense as i said standard and then the steering wheel here has a heated steering wheel option it is a tilt and telescoping in terms of the adjustments so hopping into the back seat you can see toyota has always offered a pretty spacious back seat in all the Prius models. And this new generation kind of carries over with that. Um, right, low overall legroom here is around 34 inches, which is actually a couple inches more than what you're gonna find in the Corolla hybrid sedan, which I just tested. Uh, as you can see, I have five foot seven. I have really good headroom over here. There's some good legroom. There's a nearly flat floor back here, so you could put three people across, although the Prius's narrow body does make it a little bit more difficult if those three people are a little bit wider framed. Now you can see there are two map pockets back here. All the materials are hard touch plastic, but at least Toyota does offer a nice little fold down center armrest, which is not something you can find in the Corolla hybrid. So overall, the back seat of the Prius is still very usable, but just keep in mind that um, for not much more money, you can get the much larger Camry hybrid, which has a much bigger back seat and it gets pretty similar MPG. So taking a peek under the hood of the all wheel drive Prius, Unfortunately, you're not going to get a significant upgrade in power just because Toyota has added a separate motor at the rear drive axle. So all the Prius all-wheel drive models will have a combination of a gasoline engine and an electric propulsion system that you get in the front drive models. It's a 1.5 liter four-cylinder with port injection. It makes on its own 96 horsepower and 105 foot-pounds of torque. Now sandwiched in between the gas engine and the drive wheels, you get an electric motor that offers about 71 horsepower and 120 pound-feet of torque. Now unfortunately, when you add the two, it's not a straight kind of addition formula here. You're going to lose some power in between there. So Toyota only says you're going to get a maximum of 121 horsepower combined, and they don't actually rate the combined torque figures. Now, if you're keeping score with the competition, this has about 30 horsepower less than what you're going to find in the Honda Insight. Uh, and about 18 less than what you're going to find in the Hyundai Ioniq. This car itself, because it's all-wheel drive, does weigh about 150 pounds more. Now, speaking of which, that, that second motor at the rear axle, Toyota says it adds about 7 horsepower total. You can't really combine the figures. Instead, Toyota says that rear motor will be able to power the rear wheels from up, for up to about 46 miles an hour, but really, you're only going to feel that rear drive motor uh, add the most power up until up until about six miles per hour. So it's really only supposed to help you from a stop. This 
is not a car that you're going to be taking, you know, where you take Subarus or into deep snow, because remember, it doesn't really have any more in terms of ground clearance. Now, because this has more weight, fuel economy has suffered a little bit. It's rated at still an excellent 52 in the city, 48 on the highway and about 50 MPG combined. That's a two MPG reduction versus what you're going to find in the standard front drive Prius. However, if you guys are going to go for the Eco model, that's about a six MPG reduction. Now, it all goes out through Toyota's in-house CVT transmission, again, with their all-wheel drive system. Uh, and you guys are probably curious, let this, let's get this out on the road and see how the all-wheel drive Prius performs. So by Toyota adding all-wheel drive to the Prius, have they suddenly made it more desirable? Is it faster? Is it kind of like an all-wheel drive Subaru Crosstrek that I last drove earlier this year? Those are probably questions you all are wondering about the Prius. And I have to say, for setting off in this 2019 refreshed model, it basically continues to feel like a Prius. Uh, the ride quality is super soft. I mean, this one here with the 15 inch wheels, I mean, going over this really bumpy road, <laughs> it basically just kind of glides over all the terrible bumps, which I usually will drive over this and it's it makes the stiff ride of some of the sports cars I drive through here very well known, but this car just kind of glides over it. In terms of noise, there is definitely some road noise coming in. Um, the Prius is not one of the quieter hybrids I'm noticing. I mean, uh, some other hybrids have more engine noise, which I, I'm happy to report this car is a little bit quieter in terms of engine noise, but in terms of the road noise, I definitely feel that. Now, this car's structure was one of the first TNGA platforms to come out, and the Prius definitely feels very solid. It's got that new multi-link independent rear suspension. Um, it just kind of goes down the road with the solidity that the old Prius didn't have. The steering in this car is electric, and it is definitely a little bit slower than I would like it to be. This is still no sports sedan, but the Prius feels up to the task of being a little bit more fun now. Coming to a stop here, let's see if I can get any wheel spin. Remember, this is all-wheel drive now. It had seven more horsepower at the back. It's in power mode. I'm not going to brake torque it. Let's just floor it. You can see here the torque split is basically showing this thing only putting power to the front wheels and God, this thing is sluggish. As I said before, the four wheel drive or the all wheel drive system, the rear electric motor does not operate above 42 miles an hour. And I'm going 40 right now, floored. It's the computer's not even showing power being sent to the rear. So I question whether or not this will go up to 46 miles an hour at all. Really, the only time I notice the all wheel drive system in this car is when you're coming from a dead stop. This is where the Prius is supposed to kind of add that extra traction that you really want in a car like this. So it's not really there for, you know, for driving fun. It's just there for traction at low speeds. Now, this car is definitely sluggish. It feels like it gets to 60 in around 11 seconds. I think the official time is like 10.8. Toyota really needs to do something about the uh, acceleration because I will say that the car, it feels okay off the line, but it's really when you're putting your foot down, trying to pass people, the Prius feels lethargic in those conditions. Um, the CVT, well, you know, there's no tack showing where the revs are. It, it seems to just bring the engine revs up quickly and responsively when I, when I put my foot down. And the engine is not quite as buzzy as the last Insight or Ionic I drove. Remember the Hyundai Ionic has that six speed dual clutch and it's got a very buzzy engine. You're gonna notice that when you're driving that car, but let's come to a stop here. Let's put our foot down. Slight wheel spin there, but again, it's only going sending power to the front wheel. So as an all wheel drive system, this is pretty disappointing if you guys were expecting this car to be like a Subaru, it feels very much like an afterthought. It, afterthought. The assist is so soft in this car, you really don't notice the assist unless you're going to be, you know, driving this thing, you know, on some snow or some ice when you're first getting started. And when you're first starting off in the Prius, you can make this thing drive in electric only mode. Remember, it's a hybrid vehicle. Um, when you're very light on the throttle with this thing, it will creep along in electric only mode. The problem with Toyota hybrid systems is the EV only mode is very narrow. The range in which they offer is very narrow because as soon as I put my foot down just a little bit to get some passing power, it just automatically will turn the gas engine back on and you're feeling like, okay, this car could use more power, which is a little bit disappointing uh, in that regard. Now, in terms of the visibility, the Prius still has pretty good sight lines. The hood is very low. The dash though is very long. So it makes this car feel like I'm sitting in the back seat when I'm driving this car in the front seat. The side mirrors here are a good size. There's a nice big window aside, uh, a window in front of the side mirror to help with the visibility. The view out of the back is weird because you have that 
piece of plastic that's cutting in between the uh, two pieces of rear glass. So it's a little bit strange. Uh, the body lean in this car you can feel is very significant. It's got a very soft suspension, which is what I expected for something like this. The tires also, these are eco tires, so they're not gonna offer much grip. So in terms of driving fun, the Prius really doesn't offer any. This TNGA platform doesn't feel anything like a sports sedan and whatnot. But in terms of a comfortable commuter car, this is still very comfortable. I mean, the trip computer says I'm averaging 46 MPG and I'm not even trying really. This thing gets very good gas mileage. And in the real world, it tends to get a little bit better gas mileage than a lot of the Honda hybrids or the Hyundai hybrids. So that's kind of a win for Toyota. Now, as I said before, T, um, TSSP is standard. So their Toyota Safety Sense P. So you've got adaptive cruise control is standard. You've got forward collision warning is standard. You've got lane departure alert is standard, but this does not have the lane trace assist where it'll keep you centered in the lane on highway driving. That's something that the new Corolla has. But remember, this car is the older technology. So it's got the older system, which again, makes the Prius feel you know, a little bit behind. And, and overall, in general, the Prius just feels like my expectation of a hybrid car, you know, from the past. Um, everyone has kind of moved on past hybrid hybrids the way this kind of feels. And I think the full EV, once you make the jump to the full EV, it really shows the weaknesses of a hybrid like this. And even though it offers, you know, 50 plus MPG, it's great for fuel efficiency. I think once most consumers try out the full EV, they can't go back to this. And I think that's where Toyota really should have considered moving the Prius to a full EV, a full battery electric vehicle, as opposed to this hybrid technology. I'm imagining they're thinking about it because there's very little reason to choose this over something like a Camry hybrid or Toyota's excellent RAV4 hybrid. So as you can see, when Toyota added all wheel drive to the Prius, this did not turn it into the speed demon that you would find in something like a Tesla, whenever you find a dual motor badge, because unlike the Tesla models, it didn't really add anything in terms of speed. In fact, this car actually got slower zero to 60 and in the feel for the acceleration because it's heavier, because that rear motor isn't really all that powerful. And to be honest, it doesn't even work past 46 miles per hour, which to me makes it a shame because I don't think people who are driving Subarus or all wheel drive crossovers are going to trade in their vehicle for a Prius simply because the Prius in general just has lost that cool innovation factor, that trend setting factor that the car from you know 10 years ago used to possess. And it's really a darn shame because the Prius is still a really nice driving vehicle as you guys saw. It has a really great ride quality. The interior is spacious and usable, but really behind in terms of the tech. Uh, it's designed, still not my cup of tea, but if you guys want something that really stands out, whether it's in a good way or in a bad way, this car still will kind of stand out. But I think if Toyota wants to keep the Prius successful and around, they really need to do something in terms of the acceleration, in terms of the design, and just make this thing feel really technologically advanced. Toyota really missed the mark with making the Prius completely fully electric. I think that's what they should have done, but they were kind of putting all their eggs in the hybrid basket, which I think hybrids in general are still great choices, but they're the Prius is no longer the only hybrid choice in the segment or on the market, which is why a lot of people have gone to hybrid crossovers. They've gone to other hybrid sedans. I mean, Toyota has basically cannibalized sales of the Prius due to their own lineup. The Camry hybrid is just significantly better and not much more expensive, looks better, gets very similar MPG. And then of course the RAV4 hybrid is a hot vehicle. Toyota consistently sells every one of those that come onto the lot versus the Prius kind of just sits there and Toyota dealers are discounting them, which is why they barely moved about 50,000 units annually. Now, with all that said, it's time to give the Prius all-wheel drive an RPM rating. Now, starting with the R in red line for real-world usage, I'm going to give this car a 7 out of 10 points, which is a little bit higher than the Corolla Hybrid, simply because it's a hatchback, so it offers more space in the back. Now, moving on to the E for efficiency, obviously, I'm going to give this car a high score. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 points, because in my week's worth of testing, I easily got 43 MPG in this car without even trying. And on the highway, you can easily break over the 55 MPG mark, which I was able to do when you drive this thing really economically. Honestly, it's so slow. I never really wanted to drive it enthusiastically anyway. Now, moving on to the D for desirability. Unfortunately, because the Prius just kind of feels like yesterday's car and I don't love the design of this car, I'm going to have to give it a two out of 10 points for desirability simply because the Tesla Model 3 and I is what I think has really stolen the Prius's thunder. And then if you guys want to stick in the Toyota showroom, the excellent RAV4 hybrid and Camry hybrid is also a much better choice if you guys must have a Toyota hybrid vehicle. Now moving on to the L for longevity. Obviously this is a Toyota, so I'm gonna rate this very high for longevity. 
I'm gonna give this car a nine out of 10 points for longevity because that hybrid powertrain has been around for a few years now. It's proven Priuses in general have always had a really excellent reliability record. There's a lot of you out there who tell me you've got like a 2004 Prius with over 200,000 miles and it still runs beautifully. So I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10 points for longevity. Now moving on to the I for innovation, unfortunately, the innovative days of the Prius have been long gone. I'm gonna give this car a five out of 10 points simply because Toyota hasn't really changed the all-wheel drive or the hybrid technology in this car for years, which some of you would say that's good because it's really known for reliability. But honestly, the all-wheel drive version is just kind of a disappointment for me because it only adds seven horsepower. It really didn't add any speed. It just kind of added weight and made this car slower. And it doesn't even work past 46 miles an hour. So people who have Subarus that live in the uh, snow belt states, you're not gonna be rushing over to your Toyota dealer to be trading in your Subaru uh, for this Prius all-wheel drive. Moving on to the end for need for speed. This is a Prius. Priuses in general aren't fast cars. I'm gonna give this car a two out of 10 points for acceleration simply because zero to 60 in almost 11 seconds, that is paltry in today's world. And when you consider the fact that the Insight will do that same zero to 60 sprint in around 8.5 seconds, two seconds faster, uh, Toyota really needs to work on the actual speed of this car if they wanna be uh, competing with cars with full electrics, especially like the Tesla Model 3. And finally, last but not least, the final E for expense. I'm gonna give the Prius actually a seven out of 10 points because this car is still relatively affordable. It starts at around $23,700, which is about $600 more than what you're gonna find or than what you're gonna pay for a Toyota Corolla hybrid. Keep in mind, the Prius does have a little bit more in terms of features and availability, gets slightly better gas mileage, but that new Corolla hybrid also has a bigger eight inch screen with Apple CarPlay versus this car, as you guys saw, has that really pathetic six and a half inch screen without Apple CarPlay. It's got the previous generation. And if you guys are looking for that bigger 11.6 inch display that you'll find on the regular Prius or the Prime, it's just not available on this car. Now I hear Toyota is going to be in, uh, adding that for the 2020 model year. They're also gonna add Apple CarPlay, which honestly they should have done for the 2019 model. But just keep in mind, my tester here, this XLE trim with that technology package that throws in the heads up display, stickers for a tick over $30,000, which, $30,000 sounds like a lot of money for a Prius, but keep in mind, you know, an all-wheel drive hybrid, this is one of the few ones on the market. So if you really have to have that, the Prius is definitely worth a look. But if you guys are actually looking for, you know, a hybrid electric or a hybrid or an electric commuter car, there are still other choices for me, like the Honda Insight or the Hyundai Ioniq that look much better. And if you guys want to go with the full electric route, of course, there's the Tesla Model 3, which starts at around $39,000 for the cheapest standard range version. It's pretty easy to see why everybody who used to buy a Prius are quickly flocking to that Model 3, or they're also flocking over to the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid and the Toyota Camry Hybrid. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2019 Toyota Prius all-wheel drive E. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.